my channel we are back with another video it's a great friday outside it's a nice day i look great i did snag my dress like a teeny bit before i came on camera but i don't even care we're not gonna let that run out here okay so anyway we are here to discuss the ultimatum queer love episodes one through eight okay now if you're not watching this show i don't know what you're doing because this show this season and the first season with the heterosexual people they have had me on the edge of my seat the entire time like it is so good and what i love about this particular franchise or this particular version of it is i guess i don't know i, I can't i don't want to say it's because they're queer or whatever i'm not queer i am young heterosexual whatever but what i loved about this is that everyone on here communicated so clearly like there was no standoff ishness there was no like you know screaming and yelling at each other everyone communicated communicated very clearly even if i thought what they were saying was bullshit they still were like you know i feel this way this is why blah 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 that's what i loved about it like i feel like everyone you know really came and really put their all on the table there were no questions that were left unanswered like there was no, never a time where I was like, they should have said this, or they should have asked this. No, like they got to the root and the meat of every issue. And I loved it. Like I loved it. I've been on the edge of my seat the entire time. Um, the finale, where they choose you know, who they're going to go home with or whatever, that comes out June 7th. So we are going to do, you know, another recap review, whatever for that. But right now we're just going to do episodes one through eight. And let me just say, my first thought is that this entire premise of the show is dumb. I'm going to just tell you that now. If you're in a relationship and you have to give the person the ultimatum about whether or not to marry you, that is already like red flag number one. Okay, that's already red flag number one. And then for you guys to both come on here and date other people and think that you're still going to, not even date other people, live with other people for three weeks, and think that it's not going to negatively affect your relationship in some type of way is also dumb. It's stupid. But it is entertaining, and that is key. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into it. So first I'm going to kind of start with the trial marriages to, like, the partners that they picked, and then I'm going to start with, then I'm going to go ahead and switch to the original partners and their time together, okay? Because we also know that, like, the trial marriages to the people that they picked it wasn't like it was boring, but like the time when they got back to their original partners is the most interesting part. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go through my notes that I have about the trial marriages. So first, I'm going to talk about Ossie and Mildred. Mildred's original partner was Tiff. Ossie's original partner was Sam. Ossie and Mildred, like really, and it was kind of weird. Like, I feel like they were both each other's kind of like last picks. And that's why it really didn't work out for them, like, the, like whatsoever. Some of them really didn't even like each other at all. Like, they barely were around each other. It's like she, like, Mildred always had a problem with, you know, something Austin is doing. Oh, she's leaving things here. She's not picking up after herself. I keep having to ask her to do this. And that is annoying. That can be annoying. But also, I feel like they just really, like, didn't like each other, honestly. And I feel like two things can be true, like, at the same time. Like, Mildred probably was being passive aggressive to Aussie. And Aussie also doesn't know how to communicate. Like, both of those things can be true at one time. My, my problem with Aussie, though, is that, like, she kept trying to not have a conversation and then leave and then thinking that, like, Mildred wasn't going to have want to have the conversation later. And that's probably how Sam is. Like, if you don't talk about it right now, she's probably going to not want to talk about it. But Mildred is obviously not like that. And that's why I feel like Aussie should have, um, she should have stuck it out. Like, she should have tried a little bit harder. I don't think it was fair of her to leave. Like, leave, just leave Mildred. And I feel like she should have went home, but then that would mean that Sam had to go home too. And I do feel like Sam had a lot to learn, so I, I, I guess obviously just stayed in the hotel or something. But I did feel like it was messed up for her to just, like, leave like that with a note. And like Mildred said, she had abandonment issues and stuff like that, and that just kind of made it worse. I feel like that was just kind of messed up. Like, I really didn't like that at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Mal and Mal and Lexi. Again, for 
for me, in my opinion, Lexi chose Maul because she didn't want to choose Vanessa. Like, I don't know, I just did not see like a, a real attraction between them, so I'm not sure why they picked each other. I don't know. But I feel like she chose her as a backup plan. Like, I feel like she really didn't want to be with Maul because she wanted to be with Vanessa. But once Vanessa turned her off, she didn't really have anybody else to gravitate to, so she just went ahead and chose Maul. And I thought it was so funny that like Lexi was always saying like the thing, same thing she said about Ray like late and later in the episodes. She was saying those same things about Maul too. Like it was so weird to me. She kept saying like, you know, I know her so well, and she's gonna be in my life forever, no matter what. And I know her, you know, better than I know ninety nine point nine percent of people on earth. All this type of stuff like they were really gonna be together. And then when she found out that Vanessa and Ray had did the do or whatever it's like she was about Mal no more she did not care about Mal no more like she did not try to him and I feel like Mal was very attentive and supportive and asking what she needed and really did not want to see her in that state and I really did like that about Mal but Lexi was not like she had checked out like I feel like she checked out when she found out about what Ray and Vanessa did she no longer wanted to do this and I don't know, that's what I'm saying, I don't know what you really expected from this whole situation. That's what, that's what I'm saying, too. Okay, so let's go to Sam and Tiff. So, Sam and Tiff, I really liked them together. I feel like they were the epitome of what the trial marriage was supposed to look like. Like, I feel like they both grew a little bit. I feel like Sam learned how to communicate with more better and more effectively and stand up for herself. And Tiff really realized that she did not want to do all that arguing and stuff that she was doing with Mildred. Like, it seemed like she, they both, you know, really grew in this process. And I guess that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, I do feel like Mildred and Tiff had some type of agreement beforehand. Like, y'all are not going to have sex. Like, we're not going to have sex, you know, with the other people when we come into this. And to me, that was proven by when um, Sam and Tiff had met with her friend, and the friend kept trying to get them to be a little more intimate and hold hands and all that stuff. And like, Tiff was looking like, um, no, my girlfriend's gonna smack the SHRP out of me. Like, I'm not doing that. I know this is for TV, I know what we're supposed to be doing, but I still wanna go home with Mildred, and I'm not gonna piss, I'm not gonna piss her off. And I can't, I can't, you know, I can't knock that. I have to respect that. If yeah, y'all have an agreement going into this, and I feel like you should, then by all means, expect, respect each other's boundaries. Hmm. Ray and Vanessa. Okay, this is where it starts to get a little bit juicy now. It's going to start to get a little bit juicy. So, first let me say this about Vanessa. Vanessa is manipulative and I don't want to use the term narcissist but I'm gonna use the term narcissist <laughs> she is I don't know what's up with her like she I thought like she came on this show just for the fun of it like it's when she said to Lexi that she did not think that Xander was gonna find anybody else that she could actually like or want to be with it was like so you really think that like you're just you know that bad you're just it like you're, you're you really have that high of a self-esteem that you really don't think there's anybody else that Xander could ever connect with and that's why that's why, that's why you treat her like shit you treat her like shit because you feel like she's never going anywhere so I don't have to do the things that she wants me to do I don't have to be the person she wants me to be I don't have to participate in a relationship the way she wants me to participate and she's not going to go anywhere that's extremely problematic like I just feel like something is wrong with Vanessa <laughs> something is wrong with her and when Lexi called her out I feel like Vanessa only had sex with Ray to get under Lexi's skin you cannot tell me no different and the way she was at the table or whatever after they like confronted each other about it and she was like yeah you're, I don't have any romantic attractions to her I don't, I don't I'm not really attracted to her like we're just friends we're just cool I said like girl why did you blow up these people's relationship then are you that bored in your life that you had to go blow up these people's relationship because she said that you weren't here for the right reasons? You wouldn't her girlfriend? Because she said you wasn't here for the right reasons, girl. Something is wrong with you. Something is wrong. It was extremely entertaining, but I felt like
like that was messed up. Like, and I feel like Ray, she just was going along with it. Like, and I don't understand why she, one, why she went and told Lexi that she wasn't going to do anything. And then two, I feel like it was not fair of Lexi to kind of expect for Ray to not connect with Vanessa at all because she didn't like her or she felt like something was wrong with her. Like, clearly Ray did not see the same things that you saw. No one was on the date except for you and Lexi. I mean, except for Lexi and Vanessa. So no one really heard what you saw. I mean, heard what you said. And it was kind of unfair for you to expect that Ray was supposed to not be with her or not, you know, spend time with her or whatever for the three weeks. When one, you gave the ultimatum, and two, like, okay, you, you don't like her, that's me. I don't have, to, I can't like her. Like, I feel like that's kind of messed up. And I feel like if you really felt that strongly about it, then y'all should have just went home. Yeah, but Nessa did get in there quick. Like, I feel like it was only like a day or two before she did it. <laughs> but that's besides the point. But I do feel like, like, Lexi kind of, she, she should have just left. Like, I don't know what she really wanted from Ray at that time. I feel like at some, I mean, if you're in a house with someone for three weeks, you're going to connect with them on some type of level. And I feel like any connection between Vanessa and Ray was unacceptable for Lexi. Okay, so Xander and Yoli. I did not see, I feel like I wasn't really paying attention to them with their dates or whatever. But the way they were on screen with each other, you could just feel the chemistry like coming throughout the screen like the way then it'll be rubbing on her leg or she'll be giving her to look like mm -hmm, the Trump sea face like you could just feel it and i feel like that's so crazy like y'all know how people be saying that you know lesbians or whatever they, they move quickly or whatever y'all are not beating the allegations anytime soon because the way they, it, w it was really like they were in love. Like, I don't know, maybe it was, you know, them having sex with each other or what it was, but it's like, it was, it was, it was so cute to me. Like, you know, because Anna would grab her hand, kiss her hand. Like, that's how me and my boyfriend interact. Like, I cannot say that I didn't like seeing them on screen. Like, I love seeing them on screen. It just felt so genuine. And I feel like Xander probably was like longing for some type of affection or some type of reciprocity anybody for so long and what she found out that Vanessa had had sex with Ray she was just like okay well what am I holding back for why am I holding back and I have to say probably the same with with Yoli and Mal like, like Yoli probably was you know feeling like Mal was like her best friend and she had not felt like that spark and then they felt it with each other and that's why they both fell so head over heels with each other it, it was it's like it was so cute i mean that's like i've been saying the premise of the show is stupid because of this exact reason like you y'all both gave the ultimatum and now y'all gonna go back to your partner to talk about me and love huh i would knock all of this shit over <laughs> i would be knocking all of this stuff over you come to me talk about oh yeah i'm in love but they were so cute together like i, I would not be mad seeing them you know after this process be together like it was just so cute and i really want <laughs> I, w I want them to be together like the way they were just so giddy with each other they would be looking at each other like mm, like you just tell they had all the chemistry i don't know about all the rest of the stuff but i feel like they also were the epitome of what this process was supposed to be like they chose each other and then like fell in love and i'm gonna be like Over. 
but like to me it's clear that Ray does not want to get married she doesn't even know if she wants to be with you specifically and I feel like she does, she's not against marriage she's just like I don't know and that's what I want with you and you and Lexi is not hearing her like she don't care about nothing Ray is saying she wants to get married and I honestly feel like once Ray and Vanessa had had sex like I don't feel like Lexi is going to be able to get over that I feel like she has is trying for one sake of the show for two she doesn't want to lose Ray and she knows she keeps bringing it up and she's gonna lose Ray because at the end of the day you did ask for this experience like you did but I don't feel like it's fair for Ray to keep throwing in her face like oh well you asked me to do this you asked me to do this girl I didn't ask you to have sex with that girl like I if you came up to me and told me that you were not gonna do that and then you still did it and just off of my face and then you let yourself be manipulated by this person and I'm pissed about it. And I feel like she does have the right to be pissed about it, but she's trying to sweep it under the rug for herself and for the relationship. And I don't feel like either way is still gonna help the relationship. Like I feel like they both just need to move on. Like I feel like for Ray, Lexi is not the one or whatever. And for Lexi, Ray is just the one for right now while she wants marriage. That's what they just need to break. They need to break up. Like I, I, they were already confused too. Like as soon as I saw them together, like, I'm like, I'm so confused. <laughs> like it, that's like neither one of them have has really changed the during this entire process. Like Ray still does not know who she is or whether or not she wants to get married, what she wants for her life. And Lexi is like, I want to be married, and it's just not gonna work. Like y'all need to break up. And also, I feel like Ray is all like Ray was always crying like. Every time Lexi would start talking about what she wants and like how she sees her and all that type of stuff, Ray would start crying. And to me, she was crying because she knows she does not want to be this girl. <laughs> like she's saying all this stuff and it's like, I think she's crying because it's like, she wants to reject it. Like she's rejecting it, she's rejecting it. Like I don't want this, I don't want this. But she's trying to force herself to want it because Lexi wants it. But she's crying because it's like her body is physically rejecting the relationship like that's because she's always crying always turning red like i don't feel like she really wants to be there honestly and i feel like they're gonna get, i mean you know the the final finale hasn't come out but i feel like lexi and ray are gonna break up and they need to aussie and sam aussie and has really grown during this process i was so proud of her seeing her consistently stand up for herself and stick to her guns and you know really try to communicate effectively and not let Aussie run all over her because you can tell she is kind of like an enabler and kind of like a you know we don't want to talk about this so let's not talk about it and just like go along and get along with the person and i could really see her standing up for herself and it made me proud. And like when Aussie was like, like oh, did, did um, Tiff turn you into a mini Mildred and started laughing? She kind of did. And Aussie immediately saw it and she immediately did not like it. She immediately was like, no. <laughs> like, you're not the same person I thought you were. You're not going to sit here and enable me. Enable me and I'm pissed about it. And Aussie, I'm going to have to get you together real quick. Because. Watching their relationship, it just seemed so emotionally abusive to me, and it was pissing me off. Like at first, I was just, at first I was thinking like, okay, like maybe Mildred is being a little bit dramatic, but Aussie has no idea how to communicate. She does not know who she is or what she wants. She needs to figure out whether or not she wants to be trans or not. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm saying that like if you don't know what you want from yourself or who you are or how you see yourself, how can you love another person? And then she was like weaponizing her tears. She needs therapy for her childhood trauma. Like I was just so getting so irritated watching her. And every time Sam would bring up anything, it was like, why are you bringing this up? And then she would get mad and then she would start crying. And then being like, well, you know, like the thing you said to me, you know, upset me. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? And like, Sam would only have said something like, you know, I feel like, what are you going to do to, you know, make this better? What are you going to do to improve yourself? And I'll see you get pissed. And I'm over here like, why are you, 
upset. Like y'all were supposed to be talking about your relationship. Or then we'll bring up, you know, um, her time with Mildred. Can we not bring Mildred into this? What are you mad for? Like, I'm so confused. Why are you pissed? And you could just tell, like, every time she was reacting, she was reacting out of childhood trauma. Oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Like, girl, do what? Like, ain't nobody say you're not going to a base or something. Like, all we said was, how can we improve our relationship? Like, I am so confused. And she kept sitting there crying. So you could tell that she was used to Sam running after her. And that's why she would get up and leave, get up and go to the bathroom, get up and do that. And then Sam was like, no. I'm going to sit here and eat my food. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to finish my drink. I'm going to sit here and I'm not going to go run after that girl because it's exactly what she wants. And when she said, like, you know, I'm bending over backwards to create a safe space for you, I... Like Sam is recognizing that Austin is sitting there gaslighting her to shoot shut up. And it was just really pissing me off, y'all. Like I could barely even watch this, the, their scenes together because they would be sitting there having like a regular conversation. And the moment Sam did not like immediately, you know, praise her for her new way of thinking two days ago, she would get pissed and be like, "You're asking too much from me." Like that's too f. Cursing her out, and Sam was so calm through it all. Like I feel like you're really acting right now you know like why are you saying this to me why are you calling me mate like don't just say i'm good like we're still talking it was pissing me off y'all like i need some real help you need to really figure out that childhood trauma because it was showing up in so many ways on this show and it was like i almost wanted to feel bad for her but i could tell that that's what she wanted she just wants someone to feel bad and then be like, oh, okay, you know, you're such a, a wounded child, you're such a wounded child, let me go ahead and take care of you, let me just shut up. And no, I don't want Sam to shut up. I don't want her to shut up, I want her to keep sticking up for herself, I want her to keep getting on off his ass, like, oh my goodness, like, I don't want to see Austin ever get on my CD. They need to break up as well. But good on Sam, you know, good for Sam. Tiff and Mildred. Like them together. Like, I thought they had really great sexual chemistry, and you can tell that that is kind of what keeping their relationship alive. Like, as soon as they seen each other after the whole three week day, like, they immediately got it in. And they was like, uh uh-uh, uh, like, I did this and you. <laughs> they, well, they had immediately got it in, and I love that. And I I feel like Mildred, she really did not have a chance to really grow in this process because her partner left. Like, obviously, when it left, and I feel like she really didn't have a chance to grow the way she should have. Um, with Tiff, she did have a little bit of a chance to grow, but I feel like Tiff is making excuses. Like, if you don't want to get married, that's what I'm saying, if you don't want to get married, you cannot let anyone pressure you into getting married, and she doesn't want to get married. Maybe not to Mildred, maybe just in general, but it's like every single time Mildred did what she asked, she found another red flag. Like, for example, Mildred and Tiff got into some type of you know, argument about their communication styles, and talking over each other. Tiff kept saying that Mildred was talking over her, but like Tiff was also talking over Mildred. They, they both do, do the same thing, talk over each other, talk over each other. And then Tiff said something like, you can find somebody else, and then Mildred gets mad and she takes the walks off. And I'm feeling like, Tiff, like you're doing the same thing Mildred is doing. No, you might not have gotten up and walking off, but you're basically threatening her to go find somebody else, and I don't think that's right. And Mildred came, like maybe the next day or whatever, Mildred came back and she apologized. She was like, you know, I didn't even work for my communication. You know how things were going to, blah, blah, blah. They were good. The next time they talk, Mildred is telling Tiff about how, you know, she really wasn't in love when she got married. Hindsight now. Hindsight is 2020. She basically is saying, when, when I look back at it, I really didn't marry her for love. I married her because I trusted her. I felt safe with her, blah, blah, blah. And Tiff is like, well, that's a red flag for me. How do I know you love me? And I'm over here looking like, do you want to marry the girl or do you not want to marry the girl? Like, why are you always bringing up oh, this is the red flag? Oh, this is the red flag for me. This is the red flag for me. Like, shut up. Just say you don't want to marry her. You don't want to change all this. Uh, change all this shit right now. Like, you acting like everything's a red flag. Like, girl, just let that girl go. It's like neither one of them really want to let go. And I don't feel like neither one of them will. 
I don't feel like they should really be in a relationship unless they really are going to work on their issues and communication. But I don't know if really if Mildred is really ready to work on her communication because she kept referencing that she's a Latina to the reason why she talks over people. And I don't feel like that's fair. I have an issue with talking over my partner as well. And, and I'm not Latina, clearly. It's really just because you're trying to get out what you want to say or you're thinking about your response too quickly or you already think you know you think you know the answer to what they're going to say so i think that's something you have to work on and it has nothing to do with you being latina it might not it might have something to do with how you were raised but at the end of the day that's a behavior that you have to unlearn if your partner is saying that that's what they need it's really not that hard well, i mean it probably is hard but that's what it is Mildred thinks like the fight and a cycle, like the whole, like, so we're going to get into a big argument and then we're going to make a high makeup sex and all that stuff. I feel like she feels like that's like a normal thing. Like, I feel like she doesn't really feel like a problem with it. And I feel like Tiff, the, the demeanor that she got from Sam is kind of more what she wants. Like, I feel like she's kind of seeing, like, okay, like, I mean, that's cute and it does really feel great makeup sex, but it's not really an effective way to end the argument when you actually want to resolve the situation. Like, I don't feel like Mildred understands that part of it and it, was, it sucks because she really didn't have a chance to grow in that with her partner because her partner left. Miles, Tiff, I mean, not Miles, Miles, Daniel, Yoli, Vanessa. And I, I, I put all these together <laughs> because I have things to say about all of them. And the whole love triangle thing for me, while I loved seeing Xander and Yoli on screen together, it is pretty messed up for you to come into the situation giving your partner the ultimatum like, well, yeah, if you don't marry me, I'm going to leave. And then after the three weeks, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in love with this other person. Excuse me, what? Excuse me, huh? Y'all both coming back. Oh, he's talking about some, oh, well, I'm in love. And I'm in love. Huh? And three weeks, and what really got me about Mal is like she kept saying that, like she kept saying like she falls quickly, she falls quickly, she falls quickly. And I feel like that was her trying to prepare herself for when this inevitably, inevitably did happen. She was trying to prepare herself mentally for the fact that like she could come back and be in love with somebody, and that's exactly what happened. Like you do, and you do know your lover, you do, and I thought that's just so crazy. So then like. The entire time they were they, they were trying to Vanessa and Mar were trying to basically I guess prove to Xander and Yoli that they did want marriage now and they were ready for all the things and they kind of also I mean kind of seemed like Xander and Yoli like they were like okay I mean yeah that's cute but I'm still thinking about you know my trial marriage I'm still thinking about the person I was just with and I feel like that is crazy so. Maul and Vanessa are both doing the same thing. I feel like they both are manipulating their partner into trying to stay with them. But I feel like Vanessa is doing it maliciously. Like, for some reason, I feel like, one, she's only doing it because she sees that Xander got taken away from her. Like, you know, she got her be taken. And she, I feel like she's only doing that so she can prove to herself, like, no, she really does love me more than anyone else. And I also feel like she's only trying to get Xander back right now so that she knows that him and, I mean, her and Yoli are done. Then in six months, three months, she's going to break over her. She's going to break her heart because she feels like her heart is broken. You know, she kept saying, that, you know, my heart is broken. I'm so, I feel like I'm so disrespected. It's a, she was trying to, like, I feel, I feel like she's not going to let that go. Like, she's never going to let that heartbreak go. And she's going to, in three months, six months, she's going to break up with Vanessa if they get back together. Mark my words. I could be wrong, and I would love to be wrong, but I feel like Vanessa is vindictive. Look at how she did Lexi. Like, I would not, I don't trust anything Vanessa says. Now, with Maul, I feel like she is trying to make, manipulate Yoli into being with her, but I don't feel like the same malicious intent from Mal. I feel like she's just trying to, like, I'm just trying to get my girl back. But I don't know if it's sustainable. Like, what are you doing for three weeks? 
but are you going to be doing it for the rest of the time? And like Yoli kept saying that she did not feel the romance with Maul, and I'm like, I don't know what you guys can do to change that. Like, yes, you can go to therapy, but you guys aren't even married yet. And you're already having intimacy issues, you're already having romance issues, and y'all have only been together for like three years. So it's like, I just feel like, I mean, if it's fizzled, it's fizzled. Like, if you guys are best friends now, be best friends now. Like, I feel like, you know, Xander or whatever, they, they would be okay with Yoli and Marl just being like best friends and then them being together. Like, I feel like, you know, they'd they be cool like that. Like, I feel like they should just be best friends. Like, I don't feel, I did not see the same chemistry or connection with them, Marl and Yoli, that I seen with Yoli and Xander. I didn't see it at all. It's especially with Vanessa. I'm like, Vanessa kept trying to force Xander to say I love you and like Xander would not say it back. He would you could just tell that she was really thinking about Yoli the entire time, the entire time. Now what really might have kicked, you know, Vanessa up a few notches was that hot air balloon air balloon hot air balloon ride and then she had wrote that letter or whatever to Xander. I think that might have kicked her up a few notches. But for me, I know it was manipulation because Xander said, like, oh, I've been wanting to do this for years. I've been wanting to do this for years. Y'all have been together for four years. She said that she has been wanting to do this. And the only time you think her to do it is when you're trying to use it as a manipulation tool. I do not trust that Vanessa. I do not trust that Vanessa. Well, I feel like, I honestly feel like Xander's heart is gone. Like, I feel like she did not feel any type of guilt for her feelings all and I feel like Vanessa kept trying to guilt her like oh you know it's hard for you to do this to me and my heart's broken I feel so disrespected that you're saying this to me and blah blah, blah. and then it's just, I mean like okay but like, I still feel this way I still feel this way like, you're not gonna guilt me into feeling bad about me you know talking to Yoli on Instagram you're not gonna make me feel bad about that because I do miss her you're not gonna make me feel bad about you know, not being able to get rid of my feelings for her even though I got rid of my feelings for you and you're not gonna make me feel bad about those things I feel like Vanessa kept trying to make her feel bad and it wasn't working and I was I actually was really glad for Yo I mean glad for Xander at the time so I'm like yes like stand up for yourself do not let this be at the gauge manipulate you into feeling bad when she's been giving you like just a teeny bit of love to keep you around for the past four years So Vanessa is also like claiming that she wants marriage now. She wants kids. She didn't realize it before, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if it was Xander's brother or their friend or who that guy was, but he definitely called her out for it and was like, no, you're only really saying these things now because you don't want to lose Xander. And she's like, well, no, you know, I've grown a little bit and I've changed, but like, girl, girl please. <laughs> like, girl, please, you don't want no kids don't want no marriage what you really want is an open relationship or you want a, a situation where you can do what you want that's what you want but you feel like you're not going to have Xander if you have that so you want to say oh I want kids oh I want this and if you do that you're going to just end up being unhappy in a few years anyway so it's like I really wish that you would get out your ego and just see that you guys are not compatible that's just what it is like even with mom she wants kids she wants all that stuff and that's nothing more all that and she's only pretending that she wants it now to make sure that she has Xander wrapped around her finger again. <sighs> so, as far as who needs to break up, in my opinion, I feel like Maul and Yoli need to break up. Like, y'all need to break up. And I feel like, one, Maul needs to find more self-love. Like, I feel like she, like, once they came back and she told her that she was in love with Xander or whatever. I feel like Maul kept trying to prove that she had unconditional love for Yoli. And I don't feel like that's necessary. Like, I don't feel like if you should have put yourself on the back burner so much that you were going to be like, okay, I'm, o I'm okay if you're in love with this other person because I still want to be with you and I still want you to be with me even though you're in love with somebody else. You need to have more self-love than that. Like, I just feel like it's not a, a good thing. Like, I, I, I appreciate it, Maul's patience and her support and I feel like those are all good qualities like Ma is a she's a great person she's a great human being but she needs to find someone who is just as in love with her as she is with them and I don't know if that has anything to do with self-love I don't want to speculate as to why Yoli 
was more into Zan or that she was into Maul sexually, I feel like it does have something to do with with being insecure in you guys' sex. And what I mean by that is like sometimes some lesbians will use a strap or will be comfortable with doing certain things and then some lesbians, you know, they don't they aren't comfortable with doing those things. I feel like Yoli is a type of lesbian where she wants to do those things and Marl is like, those things make me uncomfortable, I don't want to do it. So I, I feel like that is definitely a part of it. I also feel like that money, that is definitely a part of it too. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and fault Yoli for, you know, feeling like the finances play a lot into it. Like, okay, yes, you said you're saving for IVF, but Xander had already saved for IVF. Like, you're saying that you want these things, but what actions are you putting behind it to actually get these things? I do not want to fault the only for that. I'm not going to act like she's a gold digger because you can clearly see the chemistry that they have with each other on camera. So I'm not going to pretend like she's a gold digger. And I'm also not going to pretend like money is not a important factor when it comes to marriage and relationships and all that. I just think it's fucked up that two sporty people on here, now y'all talking about God of love. I think that's left. Uh, I think that's oh really quickly let's talk about when they had the little mixer or whatever and Maul pulls Vanessa Yoli and then to the side and she's like Vanessa I feel like you messaged me that because you was trying to be messy you was trying to start something Maul you was trying to start something you was trying to start something and what I don't mean like being messy I feel like you were trying to get to the bottom of what it was because you did not believe what Yoli was telling you but you did not want to see like you didn't trust her or you weren't supporting her and I think you wanted whatever it was I think you wanted it all to come out Vanessa you was being messy because you wanted Yoli to be so preoccupied with you know arguing with Maul or whatever so you could make sure you had Dana Rock up the front of the but I see that's why I'm saying like Maul and Vanessa they're, I think they're in the same boat and they're doing the same thing but intent is not the same like I feel like Vanessa is intending to be manipulative and Marl is just trying to, she's just trying to get her girl back. And she's just trying to get back to, I guess, maybe where they were before. But Yoli clearly was not happy with that. And she clearly was not happy with where you guys were before. And it really didn't have anything to do with, oh, you don't want marriage right now. It's like, you're, I'm not getting the things that I want from you out of this relationship. And I feel like that means that you need to go. Like, that's like, y'all need, that means I need to break up. Yoli and Marl need to break up. Xander and Vanessa, of course, need to break up. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. I feel like Yoli and Xander need to give it a try. I'm going to say, like, the way they were on camera, it was so cute. Like, they could just tell they were, like, it's like they were looking at each other. And they were just, it was just so hard for them to look, like, not look at each other. When they were touching that, you felt that. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm getting a little hot watching this because I can just see how in love you guys are. And I really want you guys to give it a try. Like, I do. I know it's messed up. I want you guys to give it a try. I don't think it's truly, truly, truly going to work out because I feel like you guys are only, you know, in the infatuation stage right now. And eventually you guys are going to be missing your old partners. And I feel like Yoli does not like the way Xander stands up for Vanessa. That's gonna become an issue at some later point in time. And I feel like if, if Xander and Vanessa got together, like Yoli would be an issue at some point in time. Cause it's like, I don't see Xander really wanting to give up Yoli. I feel like they would probably be creeping behind each other's back. I don't know. But what I do know is this is some messy. Okay, this show is messy. It's had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. Like. This show is great, and it's even better than the last season because it's like everyone is really putting their all into it. It was the child marriages and into the original partner. It was so good. And um, drop down in the comments, you guys. Let me know what you guys think about the child marriages and the original partner. Let me know who you guys think are going to be together in the end. That's what I want to know. I want to know you guys' opinions about who you think are going to be together in the end. Okay, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we're going to come back on order around June 7th, so that way we can, um, you know, we can go over who stayed together, who didn't, and I hope, and I really, really hope that there is a reunion. That's what I'm hoping. Anyways, guys.
don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.